effects of the eastern mud snail on benthic bacterial community structure. Objectives were to assess the resident microbiome of the eastern mud snail, compare the microbiota from the sediment to those found in digestive tracts and feces, and determine if feeding alters the community structure of sediment microbiota. The eastern mud snail is a small marine snail with a dark brown or black shell native to the east coast of North America, but is also an invasive species found on the west coast. It feeds on diatoms and algal detritus that it scrapes from the sediment surface. With few natural predators, it has proliferated to such a degree that its high abundance could potentially alter microbiota of their non-native habitats. The goal of this study was to determine how the eastern mud snail affects the microbiota community structure in its native habitats by comparing the microbiota of sediments they feed on to both that of their digestive tracts and feces, which may also lend insight into the snail's diet and the effects their feeding has on microbes of their non-native habitats. Sediment bacteria, although microscopic, can have profound effects on the ecosystem, altering food webs, biogeochemical cycling, and comprising the bulk of chemical activity that occurs in the sediment. A 10 meter transect was laid at two sampling locations, a mud flat and a sand flat near Grice Marine Lab. At each location, 30 snails were collected haphazardly from three quadrats along the transect, and sediment cores were also collected. Snails were swabbed to attain a biofilm sample, were cleaned thoroughly and placed in three tanks containing sieves. The sieve allowed for fecal matter to pass through to the base of the tank and prevented snails from consuming the fecal material, which was collected four hours later. Snails remained in the sieves for 24 hours to clear the digestive tracts. Then dissected the snails, removing three gut sections, the esophagus, the cecum style sac, or what I'll call the stomach from now on, and intestine. Because the snails were small, several gut sections from multiple snails needed to be combined. We extracted the DNA from all samples and prepared a 16S rRNA amplicon library for high throughput sequencing on AmiSeq. Data were analyzed using QIIME, a bioinformatics pipeline, and our statistical package. Bacterial diversity was greatest in the sediment and the feces, with lower diversity and lower mean number of operational taxonomic units, or OTUs, effectively species, found in the sections of digestive tract, which may indicate the empty gut has a residential gut flora present. The taxa composition helps interpret why the Shannon index was so different from tissue to sediment. Please note that the OTUs that are present 4% or less were not included in the graph, which is why these do not add up to 100% abundance. The large green portions on the bar graph represent a species of microplasma, which was present in all gut samples and in the feces, but not in the sediment or biofilm. That, and the fact that in the stomach, microplasma accounts for around 83% of relative abundance, point to this genus being a dominant part of the resident gut flora, playing important roles in digestion. Because it accounts for a large amount of the relative abundance, this would also explain why the gut samples displayed much lower overall OTUs and lower Shannon diversity. Principal coordinates analysis plot based on Bray-Curtis community dissimilarity shows that the esophagus and the intestine had very similar community structures, and this was confirmed when examining how similar they were in their taxa composition, with the stomach being more unique but still rather similar to other tissue samples. It is interesting that the sediment and the feces have similar compositions, but the sediment community is tightly clustered and very similar in community structure, whereas the fecal community is more variable, but still similar in community structure to the sediment. This indicates that when the sediment is taken up and deposited, some of the community microbiota is digested, some is added from the resident gut microbiome, and some is passed right through the snail, creating a unique community structure that differs from the sediment. The processing of sediment by the snails led to changes in the sediment microbiota, but more studies are needed to understand how this may affect sediment composition in situ, especially in areas where the eastern mud snail is an invasive species and how this could potentially lead to bottom-up changes in the ecology of these systems and changes in the composition of sediment microbiota, which in turn may affect the abundance of producers and other species in the food web. Although these snails are small, their impact could be enormous. I would love to give a huge thanks to Christy Hill Spanik, Dr. Craig Plant, and the entire staff at Grice Marine Lab, all of whom this wouldn't be possible. Thank you guys so much.